We were having a lot of issues with the Wistia data architecture. We only had access to application data. We needed to be able to pass information into Salesforce in a, a particular way. In terms of observability, all of our failures got to what I am describing here as our garbage fire of a bug snag instance. And the consequence of that for us is that we weren't able to be uh, proactive in, in dealing with issues with the integration. Before Census, making changes required working with Ruby. Now the changes only require working with SQL, which opens up making changes to the data that's being synced to a lot of other people within the organization, which is great for us. Huge benefit here is having access to all of the data in our data warehouse. And so that means we have this whole slew of data that we're now able to uh, push into Salesforce. We have these custom objects in Salesforce that we had to update in a particular sequence. And so one of the deal makers for us with Census was that we were able to do that. And so we're actually leveraging the Census API uh, via this little Python script figure here in the diagram. For the final point, the failures now trigger email alerts to let us know what's happening there with you know, details of all the errors is able to just comb through the records and, and see what's going on. And then we're able to plug it into our own internal monitoring systems, which is very powerful for us. We're going to take all of the learnings we got from rolling out to Salesforce and use those to very quickly roll out uh, to HubSpot, which I'm excited about. When you have a hub and spoke model, you have this single source of truth. And if you have the same DBT models backing the sync to Salesforce that you have backing the sync to HubSpot, you can be totally confident that the information in those two sources is going to match.